the other question amongst many I have is, so you said you went into secondary and tertiary markets. Okay. Now, as we all know in real estate, uh, their markets are within markets. Okay. So the real estate markets, many, many markets. And each city's got its own market. How do you identify which secondary or tertiary? And this is going to be particular to the USA, for example. It's going to be different in Australia, which is where I'm based, and in Sydney. So how do you identify these secondary and tertiary markets? And obviously you're targeting, you know, you're not targeting the ghettos, you're not targeting the top end, you're targeting uh, the quasi middle class, good, good quality home. So how do you... How do you discover these secondary and tertiary markets? Yeah, so so I think what you're kind of in, in America, we call like each market like an MSA, a large market an MSA. Mm -hmm. Within that market, you may have a few dozen or at least a dozen sub markets. Yes. Right. Um, I'm trying to think of a, a place we both know, like a like a Seattle, right? Seattle will have just in the city of Seattle. So Seattle is a large population, primary market, large population there. So you're going to have like Belltown, um, Shoreline, Northgate, like all these sub markets. Mm -hmm. So well, first, first what we're trying to do is, all right, let's go pick a good MSA to invest in, right? And they're separated in primary, secondary, and tertiary markets. For the most part, primary markets are the big cities. You know, these are like the top 20, you know, 20, 10 cities. Right. The secondary markets are more like, uh, I mean, I guess the population range is probably the best indicator, but mm -hmm. like, you know, these are your several million population cities. Your tertiary cities are more of your you know, half a million to a few million in that range, smaller towns. We don't go to little podunk towns of 10 to 50,000 population. We, we stay away from that. Because what we're looking for is a place with number one, good rent to value ratios so that we cash. That's always a tenant of ours. We want to cash flow day one in this investment in case there's a recession, something that happens. But we want also want to have a diverse economic profile of jobs around us. And when we stay above these tertiary markets or better, you know, you're kind of like, well, there's not really one meatpacking plant that supplies all the jobs for that one town. Mm -hmm. Like we don't invest in towns, right? Towns are small. Right? We invest in cities that have a legitimate size. And from that point, now we're left with maybe a couple hundred markets out there, right? So how do we dwindle that down? Well, mm. first of all, we're investing in more, you know, politically right states or red states, Republican, you know, in that in that form. Not the same thing politically, but when we're the landlords, we're the landowners. We want the tenant laws on our side. Mm -hmm. There's another reason why we don't invest in California, which is sort of a socialist republic. It's a California. And a lot of the landlord laws are on the tenant side. That's great if you're the tenant, not good when you're the landlord. So this is why we'll target certain states like Arizona, Texas, Georgia, Florida, um, Alabama, places like that. And typically, at least in America, these states are a lot more economic growth driven. Uh, okay. So that kind of narrows the field quite a bit, right? Yep. Um, those four or five state or five or six states, again, Arizona, Texas, Georgia, Alabama, Florida, like maybe the Carolinas, throw that in there. I'm willing to bet those six states are going to kick the butt of all the other 44 in our niche, which is why we target those. And now we're going to go look at, all right, what are the sub-markets that we're going to target?